Mm-hmm. I am too. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. not a Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, you're not. I'm okay. not. I like Valentine's Day. Yeah. My mom says that I, I should I can't get her anything for Valentine's Day because I'm not her husband. Correct. Oh, I thought it was meant for family too. No, it's for romance. Oh. Okay. Okay. I like to do a ten-second video clips. It's already, it's already going. All you have to do is just hold it. I can't even see in the sun. Like, like, what am I pushing? I think it's already running. It's doing like a video clip. Thank you. How'd it turn out? Excuse me. Is it okay if we take one more pull?
And we do know that a similar description of a vehicle was seen leaving this area as well. We've reached out to several law enforcement agencies to get more information and to figure out how all of this started and if they have any arrests or information about those suspects we saw continuously on the same surveillance video from multiple locations. In Maple Valley, Farah Jadrin, King 5 News. Smile big. That's a nice shirt. Thank you. You're welcome. There, I got it. I didn't press stop and it's right. All right, got two glasses going on. No, I need to get you a drink so we can get the more of Thank you. Allegedly did confirm that he recently purchased a pistol and that pistol and loaded magazines were inside his vehicle. $1.8 million in federal funding to refurbish six aging ferries that will serve Vashon, Fauntleroy, and other routes. It should extend their lifespan by a decade. Here on Vashon, I'm Kristen Goodwillie, King 5 News.
Hej.
fingers out of it. Cool. I think this is going to take some creative thinking. Thanks, Perseda. This morning, a suspect is in custody accused of Snohomish County's first homicide of the year. Deputies say they tracked him down in Monroe near the Skycomish River. Deputies say this 44-year-old man shot and killed a woman and assaulted another after they got into an argument at a boat launch in Gold Bar. Investigators say the two women took off on Highway 2 before, being, before pulling over to call for help. The passenger did not survive. The driver went to the hospital, and we're working to find out how she's doing. 634, a vacant South Sound school will soon be taken down after this fast-moving fire. Auburn police are investigating on what led up to two people getting shot last night. They found both of the men on 29th Street Southeast around 10. They both had at least one gunshot wound. One went to Harborview. The other went to Valley Medical Center for treatment. Right now they have no suspects. Well, it's 12.05 and let's take a live look outside. We are checking out Friday Harbor and even though it is pretty cloudy out there, it is still a very beautiful shot. Frankie Catafias is joining us from the Pinpoint Weather Center and Frankie, yeah, it's cloudy mm -hmm. and I see some green behind you too. Yeah, a little precipitation is already moving in. Nico. We've been keeping a close eye on it for most of this morning. Now we are already seeing that the coastal areas are getting their healthy little serving of some of that rain. Some of it sneaking into portions of the southwest interior and areas of the south sound and we'll continue Continue to see that moving more inland as the evening progresses. Right now, you can see some of the groundwork that's already being laid with some of this thicker cloud cover, giving us a bit of a misty appearance from our Emerald Queen Casino camera and our Queen Anne cam. Now, I do want to tell you right now, temperatures are pretty refreshing. We're still sitting somewhere in the low 60s, Bellingham in the high 60s with 67, and along the coast, we're sitting in those high 50s. Now, temperatures are going to stay pretty consistent, but that weather is going to be a little bit all over the place. This is one of several days of rain that we have coming our way. So coming up in my full forecast, we'll be tracking hour by hour what you can expect and of course where you can expect it. Nico. Thanks, Frankie. Well, did you hear or did you feel the ground shake? Because people all over the Puget Sound felt the ground shake. According to the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, a magnitude 4.3 earthquake was reported in the area. Now, the epicenter of the earthquake was around Morrow Stone Island. That's near Port Townsend. Seismologists like Harold Tobin say earthquakes like these happen more than we realize. They're a reminder that we live in an earthquake prone region. We know we have earthquake hazards here. That's very well understood and documented. A larger earthquake could always happen and we should be prepared for those. Pacific Northwest Seismic Network did respond about not sending out an alert today. They say it's because the quake wasn't big enough. Seattle and Port Angeles only had 11 seconds. Port Townsend had five before they felt the shaking. That's because the quake was only 35 miles deep. Now, experts say this is a good reminder to prepare for an earthquake. They say you should create a safety plan, prepare for an earthquake safety kit, identify and fix possible hazards in Inside your home, which can fall, and then practice dropping, covering, and holding. And this month is the perfect time to do it because October 19th is the Great Washington Shakeout, a day dedicated to participating in an earthquake plan. Also, heads up to people in Edmonds, the city experiencing a citywide phone problem right now. They can't receive calls on the business line. Edmonds police sent out the alert. Fortunately, it does not impact 911 services. They'll send out an update when the troubles are resolved. And Seattle police say they caught a Des Moines man who's been dealing drugs across the Belltown neighborhood. Here's the haul they recovered. More than 3,000 grams.